The following program is intended for mature audiences. A Democratic Republic of Sports. The Sportsocracy with ESPN Asheville hosts Tank Spencer and Jeremy Green. And welcome back into the Sportsocracy. I'm Tank Spencer. Jeremy Green's alongside, and we continue with our 2020 Post Senior Bowl seven round mock drafts. Doing every team. Be sure to hit the subscribe button here in the Sportsocracy so you get all of our team by team content. But let's talk about the Las Vegas Raiders, the team that I never believed was ever going to make the playoffs this year. And somehow, despite every hurdle thrown in their way, they were able to do it. And now, they start over with a new front office with a new head coach what are they going to do in the draft the first in the in the first round at number 22 overall is he the best linebacker in this draft a lot of people say he is Uh, i like devin lloyd a lot he is not my number one linebacker but he's pretty close uh there's really nothing that he doesn't do well uh he slots in to me as an immediate starter if there, if you told me there was a player in this draft, defensively, that had Micah Parsons level impact immediately, it would be Devin Lloyd. He's one of the best pass rushing linebackers I've ever seen. He's not as unbelievably athletic as Micah Parsons. He's not going to run a four four. He'll run somewhere in the four sixes. Uh, six three two thirty five doesn't really. There's no real knock on him. He may be a little thin, but that's really about it. Uh, I, I think he's going to come in immediately, be a high-end pass rusher. He will help Max Crosby, and he's not a liability in coverage. He's actually very good in coverage. He's not the best cover linebacker in this class. That's Brandon Smith, but he's very close. He's in the top three, immediate three-down linebacker. I think he would be he would be the captain of this team in a year. Wow! Don't necessarily think he'll do it as a rookie, but he might. might. He's that good, and everybody at Utah just loved him. So just football smarts, leader of the defense, he can do it all. He's just a very okay. – he's an unbelievably good player and a great value at 22. He's my 11th best player in this draft. Yeah, so uh, value there for the Las Vegas Raiders. Uh, how about in the second round, let's uh, keep adding to that defense with Fedarian Mathis, a defensive tackle out of Alabama at pick 53 overall. Uh, there's a lot of him. Uh, he's 6'4", 313. <laughs> and he just does a little bit of everything he's not a great run stuffer but he's good he's not a great pass rusher but he's good to me he is a high level version of jonathan hankins who last year was not particularly good i think he would anchor the interior of this defense right away and you pair him with devin lloyd and now you take the fact that you struggled against the run last year and now you would be good against the run based off two rookies that's with no free agents no nothing just two guys that you take in the first second round that immediately slot in as starters if there is one negative to say about Fedarian Mathis, there's not a lot to him. He's very big. He's very strong. But he didn't have a lot of moves. And I really only started seeing the pass rush his last year. And as I always say about Alabama players, it's very unlikely that he's going to go to the NFL and get better. Mm-hmm. Nick Saban gets everything out of the players he has. And this would be one of those. But I do think he's a starting level defensive tackle the second he steps in the league uh, and he's 24 years old and you all you always say that that matters when you're going up against 18 19 year old kids and on it, the other side and it certainly matters w- when you play a super physical position yeah. like Federian mathis does yeah. do i think he's ever going to be a pro bowler no but i do think he could be a six to eight year starter in the nfl all right let's talk about that offensive line for the uh, las vegas raiders at 86 overall in the third round you got him getting chasing hines the guard out of lsu well be really honest with yourself the interior of this line was not very good uh, and this is a kid that there is a wide range of grades on. I have him as the fourth best guard in this class. Uh, he's behind Ed Ingram, his his guard mate at LSU. Mm-hmm. He's behind Zion Johnson. He's behind Iki Aquano. That's it. There, there are no better guards in this class. Uh, I think he gets he gets knocked for things that were not in his control. You cannot ask a guard to hold up for seven seconds, which is what LSU quarterbacks did at times. And this is a player that I think is going to come into the league. He will go higher than people think, right in about this range, middle of the third round, be an immediate starter. Uh, he's a little heavy-footed, a little bit. Not as, mu- not as much as he is given. The, the flack he gets is way too drastic for what I see. The high end is really, really good. It's just a question of can you get that out of him all the time. 
and and I don't know the answer to that, but I think the interior of that line, I mean, the kid's 350 pounds. My biggest drawback on him is that I'm not sure he can control his weight. If he does, he will be a high-level guard. Him and Leatherwood in, on the interior of this line, because Leatherwood's a guard, he's a guard, he's a guard. I said it last year. I'll say it again this year. <laughs> right. He's a friggin' guard. All right, they if figured you know that out. That, if you know that going in, it makes it much easier to stop putting him at tackle. Every deficiency he had was put under a microscope when you put him at tackle. These two at guard, I think you have solidified that for the long haul. In the fourth round, 124 overall. How about a cornerback out of Penn State, Tariq Castro Fields? Uh, this is a kid that the 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 evaluation on him it varies a little bit. Very good man press cover corner. Not particularly great in zone. Uh, not nearly as good of a tackler as you would like him to be. Uh, the bad thing with him is that he was always in the right position, but there were many times that he didn't make the tackle. If he was a better tackler, he would be a second-round pick. There are so many he got blown up at the point of attack or got just blown off the ball that it makes you nervous. Needs to add some good weight to the frame. He's six foot, about a buck ninety-five. He's not going to run a blazing time, but he is fast enough. I think he's a four-four-five kind of guy. Uh, can return kicks, of which I, I'm almost remiss to even say that because now so few kicks are even touched that that's oh cool. That's a thing you can do. Wh- whoopie do. There's a lot of raw in this kid, which is why he falls to this point of the draft when a lot of people think he's going to go in the second day. In the fifth round, they have back-to-back picks at 163 and 164. At 163, Reggie Roberson Jr., wide receiver out of SMU. Uh, I like this kid a lot, and I think he can be a legitimate replacement to Henry Ruggs. The reason that he falls this low is because he doesn't really do anything else. This kid's really good at just getting open. Doesn't have the best hand you've ever seen in your life, but what he does better than the, the one trait that's going to get him drafted in the NFL is that over the top, he can burn you. What may screw him is that I don't think he's going to run as fast as people think, which is why he's going to fall into the fifth round. It's hard to look at a, at a burner deep threat that runs a four or five, five, right? But he plays faster than I think he's going to run in a pair of shorts. All right. How about the second pick here in the fifth round at one sixty four? Zacoby McLean, linebacker out of Auburn. Uh, this is another guy that will help you against the run, and he's ready to play immediately. A uh, little short, you know. One of the one of the biggest knocks against him is he is, is that he is short, but he's very shifty, uh, very very quick for a linebacker. I think he'll run in the low four fives. Uh, the only problem is he's small. In the NFL five years ago, he'd have been a safety no shot he would have played linebacker in this league but if you told me moving forward you had divine diablo zacoby mclean and devin lloyd that is a really good core of linebackers against the run now are you going to have to scheme part of this because he's not good in coverage he is a i'm not gonna say he's a liability but, but he's pretty damn close he's probably a first two down linebacker would be really nice if you had the the coverage guy could play off and on with divine diablo but getting a kid like this this late, he is ready to play, and he's ready to play very quickly. All right, their last pick comes in the seventh round at 224 overall, and here's a tight end, Daniel Bellinger out of San Diego State. Um, this is this is not like a Darren Waller replacement or anything. No, no, no. this is this is is he enough, is he is this guy a blocker though? Uh, he is a decent enough blocker decent okay uh, he fits into <laughs> the this is a little bit of a projection pick and once i thought about it i couldn't unsee it with josh mcdaniels coming in to this team darren waller is a great piece to have obviously he's one of the best tight ends in the league in terms of what i have ever seen josh mcdaniels do i've never seen him use a tight end like that aaron hernandez yeah he wasn't nearly that tall and he didn't play in the slot aaron hernandez was a move tight end that is not what darren waller is Daniel Bellinger, on the other hand, can be a move tight end. I could see it, it, this is more gets more into scheme of how can you use the kid to get open? How can you use what he does well? Has one of the best sets of hands in this class. Not crazy athletic, a decent enough blocker, but he can be a threat over the middle. This is a kid that can come in, I think, very quickly and establish a role. Am I telling you he's going to be a three-down starter? No, I'm not. There's the reason that he goes, and I can't remember the pick number now, uh, 224. There's a reason he goes this low. But 
in terms of what Josh McDaniels is going to need to implement this offense. If you told me I had this kid, Darren Waller, and Hunter Renfro, on third down, I have multiple options. This is not, hey, it's going to Hunter Renfro, which is what I saw a lot of times from the Raiders last year. This kid kind of reminds me of Blake Jarwin that plays for the Cowboys. Is he ever going to be a high-level blocker? No, probably not. Even though he's built like he should be. If he gets a little bit stronger, the technique is there. It's just really inconsistent. Not what he was asked to do at San Diego State either. So that should be taken into account. I think you get to carve out a small role early and could be on your roster for a good long time. I like this kid a lot. And after making the playoffs this past year, like I say, Josh McDaniels comes in to take over as head coach. They got the new GM as well. See if uh, We'll see if the previous fruit from the Bill Belichick tree will actually produce anything out there in the desert uh if you if you liked any of this video tell jeremy it's it was good if you hate it go ahead and bash him it's fine uh, if you like the picks (laughs) if you didn't like the picks if there's a player you would like to know how they fit with your writers feel free to comment those i answer those every single day uh and this is the first of three mock drafts i do one now i do one after the combine and, and free agency has calmed down and then i do another that goes out two days before the nfl draft 2022 post senior bowl seven round mock drafts continue here in the sportsocracy don't forget to hit the subscribe button like the video as well if you liked it uh but subscribe so you can get all our team by team content throughout the draftmas season i'm tank spencer he's jeremy green and we will see you next time